Hello students, so in this lesson, we'll be learning to do the evaluation question. Uh, many of you have stated that uh, the evaluation question is something that you're not sure about or you're not sure about the different parts of the evaluation question. So we will be going through it today. Uh, feel free to rewatch the video, pause, rewind uh, and make sure that you understand the components of the evaluation uh, before you sit for your examinations. All right, moving on. Okay, so in this lesson, we'll be going through four different things. Basically, first, uh, what are evaluations? Secondly, what makes good evaluations? Uh, third, structure of evaluations. And fourth, putting your skills to the test. So I will be putting a timestamp for you uh, for the different sections so that you can go to the different sections if uh, you're only unsure about certain sections. Alright, so firstly, what are evaluations? Evaluations are your opinions about an issue that are supported by reasons. So evaluation questions or what evaluations actually mean is that they are asking you for your thoughts or your opinions about a particular issue and you have to give me a good reason to support why you chose a particular uh, chose a particular way of thinking, for example. So... Uh, for example, we have an evaluation question down here in the green box. Evaluate the effectiveness of flooding mitigation strategies used in Vietnam. So in this question, what you'll actually have to do is tell me what Vietnam is doing and tell me whether they are effective or not. So you're giving your opinion about whether the flooding mitigation strategies were effective and you have to give me reasons. So reasons in this case would be uh, it managed to prevent floods 90% of the time. So if it was able to do so, then you would say that it is very effective. So what is the difference between evaluation questions versus describe explain questions? There are three main differences on how these different questions differ. So for the first one, uh, basically it carry more marks compared to uh, explain and describe questions. Usually explain and describe questions are worth two to three marks, while evaluation questions are worth around five to six marks. So that's almost double uh, the amount of marks. Secondly, evaluation questions require longer answers. So because they are worth more marks, intuitively it would, they would actually require longer answers. And then number three, they require creativity rather than simply copy and pasting. So for example, if you're given data and then you're asked to evaluate uh, something that is done somewhere, you cannot simply just copy paste whatever you have learned in your textbook. Rather, you need to use the data and then you, you, you need to use this to um, support why you say something. Alright, so we're done with the first uh, item on our roadmap and then moving on. What makes good evaluations? So in this section, we'll actually be talking about uh, if you want to write a good evaluation, you want to score 5 or 6 marks, then you have to make sure that you don't commit uh, these mistakes that I'm going to be talking about. All right. So good evaluations consist of three things. Firstly, you need to have good reasons to support your opinion. Good reasons uh, basically means you need to have data, you need to uh, support something that you say, and you need to convince me uh, as a reader that your opinion is, is not baseless. There are reasons to support it. Second, it must be a balanced argument. So if you want to make an evaluation about something. Let's say you want to say something is effective. You have to tell me both sides of the story. It cannot be in a way that, oh, it is fully effective and it doesn't fail. So a balanced argument is basically, tell me both sides of the story. What are its advantages of this mitigation strategy? What are the disadvantages of a particular mitigation strategy? And thirdly, never contradict yourself. What contradiction actually refers to is that you say one thing and then you go ahead to say the opposite of what you just said. So for example, I will say that uh, channel widening is very effective in Vietnam, full stop. However, channel widening is not very effective in Vietnam. So I say that it's effective and then I went along to say that it is not effective. So that is basically contradicting myself. So you must make sure that you do not contradict yourself. Alright, so what makes good evaluation? Three things. You need to make sure that you have uh, good reasons. 
a balance argument as well as um, the last one which was never contradicting yourself now let's talk about the structure of evaluation so how should my answer actually look like so usually evaluation answers will contain this different parts here it is basically made out of four paragraphs uh, but you might think that paragraphs are really really long however they can actually be short if you stick to the guidelines that i give you so each paragraph has its own structure meaning there are diff there are different ways to write each paragraph there are each paragraph has a different way of being written and i will go through this with you uh, in the next few slides i know you're looking at it and like wow four paragraphs i've never written something so long before for a geography paper uh, however, don't worry about it. Once you get the hang of it and once you understand how to write an evaluation answer, it will be very easy. Trust me, alright? So, in our first paragraph, which is uh, the introduction, it is basically me telling you what is my opinion. So, for example, uh, you have to tell me, let's say the question asks you about the effectiveness of mitigation strategies in Jakarta. Just tell me, was it effective? was it not effective so that is what i mean by uh, echoing the question basically answer the question so this paragraph can be simple as a single sentence let's take a look at the example here evaluate the effectiveness of strategies used to mitigate the impacts of flooding in jakarta the strategies used to mitigate floods in jakarta are ineffective full stop so that is a good that is an example of an introduction it is short it answers the question is it effective or not effective basically an introduction is just telling us what your opinion is so it can be as simple as a single sentence all right let's move on so i'll bring you back to this evaluation burger here so we're done with the introduction what we're left with with the body paragraph as well as the conclusion so for your body paragraphs, it is actually very simple. It is basically your evaluation of why you say a strategy is effective or not effective. So for example, in Jakarta, there may be two different mitigation strategies that they carry out. So you will mention about strategy one in one paragraph and then strategy two in another paragraph. So inside this body paragraph, you have to explain to me what is this mitigation strategy. So for example, uh, channel widening and channel deepening seeks to increase the uh, channel capacity and then prevent floods. So tell me the advantages of a strategy. Why is it good? So when the channel capacity is increased, it is able to contain more water and this allows uh, floods to be prevented, for example, during periods of intense or heavy rainfall. So disadvantages of strategy. So the disadvantages of this strategy is perhaps maybe it's very expensive. Maybe it takes very long. Uh, maybe the canal may be filled with rubbish and then it leads to channel capacity ultimately being reduced. So tell me what is good about it. It prevents the floods. How does it prevent the floods? Uh, and then tell me what is bad about it. Alright. So that is your three parts of your body paragraph. And then in part four of your body paragraph, remember, if in your introduction you say it's effective, then you have to tell me that uh, in Jakarta, it is effective because why? So give me uh, evidence uh, why you say it's effective. So for example, it was able to stop uh, a flood that could have been very damaging in 2010. So this is basically you giving your evidence uh, to support your uh, statement or your opinion at the start. Alright, so it is exactly the same for the other body paragraphs. So for your body paragraphs, just follow the previous slide. Uh, you guys have the worksheet. Uh, use that worksheet to actually help you practice writing your evaluations. So an example here is uh, channel improvement in Jakarta. So channel improvement, which is the strategy that we're going to talk about, refers to changes made to the river channel or canal to increase its channel capacity or channel efficiency. So this is the definition of what channel improvement is. So, and then I explain to you what this strategy is, and then I tell you what is good about it. It is effective because it prevents uh, floods by increasing channel capacity. So, this is very good. What is good about channel improvement? 
and then I go on to tell you about the disadvantages of the strategy, meaning that it is what is bad about the strategy, what is difficult about the strategy, and then I link to my link my opinion with evidence. So let's say they give me a, a story or data. In Jakarta, this strategy has been ineffective in mitigating the impacts of floods. Remember, my initial point, my initial opinion is that it is ineffective, right? So I just link it back to my initial opinion. So this strategy has been ineffective. And then I give you the data that I have been given perhaps in my story. So therefore, Jakarta continues to face massive economic and social impacts due to floods. Very simple. So if you're confused about right, how to write a body paragraph, rewind this section. Uh, watch it perhaps two times. Watch it slowly. Uh, try it on your own. Try writing a paragraph on your own uh, in order to practice your uh, body paragraphs, how you write your body paragraphs. Okay? Uh, you guys have been given a handout in class, so hopefully that would help you because it was uh, done in a step-by-step -step fashion and meant to help you out. So please use that worksheet uh, to guide you in writing your uh, body paragraphs. So as you can see here, we're done with the introduction. We already did that at the start. We're done with paragraph 2. Paragraph 2 and 3 are basically the same uh, in terms of structure. And then we're going to talk about paragraph 4, which is the conclusion. So a conclusion is basically a closing for your answer. You need to repeat your opinion. So remember, if at the start you say it's effective or not effective, say the same thing. Remember, don't say the opposite thing because you will be contradicting yourself. And then you need to repeat your opinion and then you need to summarize the reasons why you say so. Provide me a summary of your body paragraphs. So this is how an example will look like. So overall, the strategies implemented in Jakarta are not very effective. And then I summarize my arguments. This is because the lack of efficiency by the government in predicting and forecasting of floods, as well as cooperation by people in the channel improvement efforts uh, in the floods continue causing massive economic and social impacts in Jakarta. So basically, just give me a one-line summary of what you talk about in your body paragraph and make sure that it, it shows that the strategies are ineffective because what you're trying to prove to your audience is that the mitigation strategies are not effective in this uh, case study that we're looking at. Alright, so this is a sample answer that I have here. Uh, it is a sample body paragraph about forecasting and warning. Uh, you can pause the video and take a look at this uh, structure if you want to just uh, try to consolidate your learning. However, do note that in your examinations, you might not get the example of Jakarta. You might be given some, uh, somewhere else. So don't uh, memorize this example of Jakarta, I would say. Try to understand how evaluation questions work as well as how the answers should be structured and you'll be fine. Alright, so I'll just put this on in this on the screen for a bit. Remember you can pause the video to take a look at it. And I guess that's all for today. Uh, remember evaluation questions are actually very simple once you get the hang of it. However, if you have any further questions that you'd like to clarify, feel free to email me, feel free to message me. Uh, and I will try to help you clarify your doubts. Thank you and all the best for your geography paper.